Welcome to the lesson on the ACLS survey. In this video, we'll review the ACLS survey, which follows the ABCD pattern. A stands for airway, which you should monitor and maintain open at all times. As a provider, you must decide if the benefit of adding an advanced airway outweighs the risk of pausing CPR. If the individual's chest is rising without using an advanced airway, continue giving CPR without pausing. However, if you're in a hospital or near trained professionals who can efficiently insert and use the airway, consider pausing CPR. B stands for breathing. In cardiac arrest, administer 100% oxygen. Keep blood oxygen saturation, or SATs, greater than or equal to 94% as measured by a pulse oximeter. Use quantitative waveform capnography when possible. Normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide is between 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury. High quality CPR should produce carbon dioxide between 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury. If the ETCO2 reading is less than 10 millimeters of mercury after 20 minutes of CPR for an intubated individual, then you may consider stopping resuscitation attempts. C stands for circulation. Obtain intravenous or IV access when possible. Intraosseous access, or I.O., is also acceptable. Monitor blood pressure with a blood pressure cuff or intraarterial line if available. Monitor the heart rhythm using pads and a cardiac monitor. When using an AED, follow the directions, that is, shock a shock or rhythm. Give fluids when appropriate. Use cardiovascular medications when indicated. Last is D, which stands for differential diagnosis. Start with the most likely cause of the arrest and then assess for less likely causes. Treat reversible causes and continue CPR as you create a differential diagnosis. Stop only briefly to confirm a diagnosis or to treat reversible causes. Minimizing interruptions in perfusion is key. This concludes our lesson on the ACLS survey. Next, we'll review airway management. 